Hello, in today's video, I will be going over some common troubleshooting tips for your gantry and your boron printer, including deracking. Now, deracking is one of the first things you should do once your gantry is fully assembled and installed in the printer. The tips that I will cover in this video, I will be using a V2, for example, here. However, these steps do apply to the V0 and the V1 as well, as well as most other common Core XY printers. Now with deracking, the first thing you want to do is ensure that the gantry itself is square. Now on the V0 and the V1, as long as your frame is square when you assembled it, the two Y rails should be parallel to each other. So on the V2 though, since we have the flying gantry and it is installed separately, the first thing we want to do is ensure that our Y rails are parallel to each other. So the first thing we are going to do is using a ruler, we are going around the gantry and we want to ensure that it is equally spaced to the top of the frame. The reason for this is if the gantry itself is on an angle, for example, and not properly squared up, this can affect the movement and will not give us optimal results when we go to derack the gantry. So now that the gantry is level to the frame. We want to start by making sure our Y beams are parallel. So you can do this with a tape measure. However, I found the easiest way to do this is to simply move your X carriage back and forth. Now, if it moves back and forth smoothly and evenly, odds are they are parallel to each other. However, if you find that you get some resistance, specifically more towards the back, which we have here, what that most likely means is that your rear cross beam is either pushing out or pulling them in. So the easiest way to fix that is to loosen the screws that attach the rear cross beam to the AB motor mounts and loosen them and then move your X beam around until everything finds its natural home. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen those screws right now. There we go. And there we go. So we do have smooth movement. Now at this point, I recommend don't go and tighten these up too tight. And the reason for that is while this is being used to ensure that the spacing is correct, this X-beam itself it is racked at this point. I know this because I, I purposely racked the gantry for this video. However, if you remember trig, if it is perpendicular to your Y beams versus on an angle, the distance will be different. So the length itself between these two beams will be different. So if you tighten that up right now and then you go to derack your gantry, uh, if this is on an angle and then you make it straight, this space actually grows. So you'll end up with binding in the back. So first thing, I ensure that I do have free movement front to back with my X beam. And then I leave the back cross beam just a little loose until I derack the gantry. So what is racking? Essentially what it is, is with your Y beams being parallel to each other, the X gantry itself should be perpendicular. So that means it should come off at a 90 degree angle on both sides. Racking is when it is on an angle itself. So the easiest way to see racking and demonstrate it is when you bring your X gantry all the way forward. On one side, you will see that it touches. And on the other side, you will see that there is a gap. So see how we have a gap here on the left side, where on the right side it touches. When we move the gantry to the rear, you will notice that is the opposite, where we have the left side touching and now the right side has a gap. So we need to remove this inconsistency so that both sides touch equally at the same time. So the easiest way to do that is to loosen your screws that attach your XY joints to the X rail itself. And then once loose, there should be a little bit of play there. 
and then you can bring your gantry all the way to the front ensure that both sides touch equally bring it to the back ensure both sides are touching equally as well now you may need to manually twist the gantry itself just to kind of make sure everything lines up there you go there bring it back to the front to double check And you don't, you don't need to shove on it. You just need to just give it a, a slight firm push just to ensure that it is. There we go. And then once you're happy, uh, just go through and just snug up your screws to begin with. Double check again. Check again at the rear. And then go through and tighten up your screws finally. And then after your screws are tight, double check one more time to ensure that your gantry is de-wrapped. And then do another movement test just to ensure that you have free movement in X and Y directions. Nothing is binding. And then at this point, Tighten up your rear cross beam. Now some tips to ensure that this process goes smoothly. When you are installing your front idlers and your A and B motor mounts, you want to ensure that they are all installed flush to the ends of the extrusions. The reason for that is, is if Say, for example, this right here is sitting off the front of the extrusion on this side, but not on the other side. That means the spacing between these components on each side may not be equal. And when you're trying to de-rack the gantry, that adds another variable that will make it more difficult. So, for example, if, if a spacing here was less than on the other side, you're constantly going to be chasing because, say, for example, you move your gantry to the back and you have both sides hitting equally, but you bring it to the front and one side's always off, it's just going to add more variables and more frustration when it comes to deracking. So you want to ensure that your Y beams are exactly the same length and both components on the front, so the front idlers and the AB motor mounts, are installed equally on both sides. So that just helps with the installation. Now, also another thing, another tip too, is when you are installing your XY mounts to the carriage there are four screws that hold it in place don't install one screw and then tighten it and then install the other ones you want to install all four screws loosely then snug them up then tighten them you want to ensure that this isn't out of square with your carriage as much as possible and installing all the screws at the same time and using it to align the xy joint to the carriage itself will help greatly okay now at this point i've gone ahead and installed my XY belts. Now the trick for installing the belts is to ensure that they are both the same length. So what I do is I run one belt, I cut it to size with a little bit of extra, and then I remove it, cut another belt that is exactly the same length down to the same number of teeth, and then I install both belts and tension both equally. So final tension isn't important right now. We just want to ensure that the belts are tight and that they are equally uh, spaced out when it comes to the extra amount sticking out of the X carriage. So now we're going to go ahead and move our gantry all the way to the front. And now at the front, we're going to go ahead and using the two tensioning screws, we are going to tighten the belts a bit. And we're going to start by tightening them equally just a couple turns and then you're going to go and feel your belts and you want them to be equally tensioned so you don't want one belt being much tighter or looser than the other and then we are going to go ahead and remove the other type of racking so we've already removed the racking from the assembly of the gantry and now we're going to remove the racking induced by the belt tension now, by trying to use the exact same length belts and tightening both sides equally, you want to try and minimize as much 
racking induced by the belts themselves. However, in case there is any minute amount of racking, which in this case we lucked out and there doesn't appear to be any, you can use the tensioning screws to ever so slightly tweak the tension on each belt to remove the racking induced by the belts themselves. So now we're going to go ahead and move our gantry around just to ensure that we do have smooth motion and nothing is binding up. Now, of course, you are going to feel a lot more resistance now that we have everything belted up and you don't want to be doing this with the motors hooked up to the controller that can induce back current, which could uh, damage the electronics. So we're going to move to the back and see if we have any issues here. We don't appear to. Everything seems to be good. Now, one trick I'd like to do is push the gantry forward and back without touching the X carriage and see if it wiggles. If you see your X carriage as you move the gantry to the front and back, do one of these. Then you know you have something wrong in your belt path, either a misalignment or way too much friction or you have a really bad bearing somewhere. But if you're moving it front to the back, and it doesn't really move too much. Maybe a small hiccup here and there. I wouldn't be too concerned, but if you are seeing it move on a diagonal, that would be something I would definitely, uh, definitely warrants looking into more. Now, as for belt tensioning itself, um, I'm not gonna dive too deep into it simply because there is so much differing data on belt tensioning. What I tend to do is when I'm first building the printer, I go along and ensure that my belts are equally tensioned. So you have, if you put roughly the same force on each side, they roughly move the same amount. Not too tight, not too loose. Um, and then I'll run a print. If the print runs fine, um, I won't play with them. Now, the first time you string up a printer, after about 24 hours of printing, especially in, with the enclosure, uh, you are gonna wanna go in again and just, uh, you may have to adjust the tensioning on the belt, um, especially with new belts, they will stretch a little bit at first, but after the initial uh, re-tightening, after about 20 to 24 hours of printing, you shouldn't have to adjust them again, ever. Um, but as for how tight the belt should be, um, I don't know, this is, this seems good to me. Um, I'm putting equal force, just a slight amount of force. Different belts, if you buy a different belt other than Gates belt, um, will have a different tensioning point. Different size frames have a different tensioning point. Uh, people have recommend using, you know, uh, guitar tuners to check the frequency. However, depending on where your gantry is, when you do it, how long your belts are, it's going to be different. There's so many different variables. I find simple trial and error is the easiest way to adjust belt tension um, until I see more empirical data on a proper way of doing it. Um, this is how I've been doing it for the past two years and I haven't had any issues doing it this way. Thank you for watching this video. I hope what I have gone over here does help you with your build. If you do have any further questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. If you would like to see more content such as this, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I do plan on putting out more videos on Voron builds and also some other projects that I am working on in the meantime. Thank you for joining me and have yourself a great day.